game of the quarterfinals. It's Scheman and Niner, and Scheman will take it. Dion will come out of his own end zone. Has a little bit of space. But can't break free at the 28-yard line. Yeah, and, and, and Scheman is one of the better players that you're going to see in the competitive scene. Uh, and he said that he learned so much by going to the Madden 16 championship last season. Uh, and he felt that, you know, while he put a good performance on at that event, he really had to grow up and learn a lot as a competitive player because he said he got to the stage, he got to the bright lights, and, and it kind of overtook him in terms of uh, not really focusing on the game. And since that time period, since last June, he's really focused on his composure. He, he needs to have some of that, what we saw from Nini here today, and, and play his game, and he feels like he can win the tournament. So Scheman will start the ball first and 10, from the 28. The carry, and he Marshawn goes to the Lynch. beast mode. That's Marshawn Lynch at the 31. Yeah, he'd start the, the game off with a quick run. Uh, he likes to run unique offenses, unique defenses. These are all different things that he feels separates him from everyone else uh, in the competitive mad community. He doesn't just run a carbon copy of what you see everyone else run. He doesn't just run the nickel blitz to run the world. So second and seven from the 31. Air McNair in the gun. Do you know where McNair played college? I don't. Alcorn State. And he'll throw it deep. And Jimmy Graham really almost turned into the defender there as Sean Taylor was on the cover. Yeah, and good coverage deep downfield for GG Niner. He, from 2010 to 2015, GG Niner, uh, Earl Levy, he was a military police. He went all over the world, went to places like Japan, Virginia. So again, shout out to him for his service uh, to the country. So third and seven. Good defensive play as he was trying to squeeze it in to Ed McCaffrey. Good start. Good start for you if you're if you're Niner. You know, we've, we've sort of been going a little bit chalk here. I, I wouldn't consider the I mean SC moving on as a as an upset over poison, maybe the way he did it. But if GGG Niner from nearby San Jose, California can stand tall here on a big fourth and seven. We'll see what scheming goes to here. McNair, rolling to the right, has room if he wants to run. Beautiful. He'll pull it back. And did Jones get a foot in? They'll say no, and it's a turnover on downs. Yeah, that was a nice little rollout play. He said he likes to go to that PA read. Watch here, roll out to the right, Julio Jones toe tap it. This is not Super Bowl 51. Julio Jones' feet are not in bounds. Gets one down, but can't get two down. And so now here comes GGG. Likes to run a lot of strong powers out of the strong pair. He'll hand it off to Frank Gore. This, this has got to be a dream for him. Yeah, you know, oh you get yeah. to play for your team. You got your main man, Frank Gore, in the backfield. And now you're in control here early. Yeah, well, that's what it's, uh, it's about for a lot of these guys here. You know, you got Scheming Monster. These are the guys that are the best in the world. But for some of the other players who are trying to put a, their name on the map, uh, an opportunity like this to just get your, your name out in front of everybody, show you how good of a player you actually are, that's what this represents for Niner. Boy, I'm loving the uh, mentality here. Another one up the gut, this time for 11. Sean Taylor on the tackle. Scott, if you are a, a, a guy that likes someone that runs the ball, you're going to like Niner. He likes to get the ball to Frank Gore. I'm a little bit old school. Three yards in a cloud of dust. That's not the youth movement. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, it's not. And they'll give it to Jones. Don't get me wrong. I love to see a young kid, a true boy, throw it all over the field. Hey, interestingly enough, you said that. Uh, Niner has played both of them in this season. He's 4-0 against true boy, he said. And he's 2-0 against young kid. Unbelievable. Okay. Might have to have... <laughs> Donnie Moore check the facts. When Donnie, it comes can to, you verify? When it comes to that one. But he's looking good so far, and Selleck almost stiff-armed him wet his way into the end zone. He's now got the ball at the one-yard line, third and goal. There you go, ball on the one. You can see here a little pop pass out to that right flat. Selleck almost gets in. Two for two so far with uh, Brett Favre. Maybe Scheming coming in a little bit overconfident here. That, a lot of times that seems to be the case, I think, with a lot of these higher seeds. A lot of pressure on the line here. Come out on field goal block. A little motion. He'll flip the script. Five on the play clock. They'll go to Frank Gore. And there was Barr coming through the gap. 
and he's going to take the three. Yeah, those are missed opportunities. Those are tough right there. You get the ball all the way down to the one, and then on third down, you love an opportunity to kind of get stuffed on a quarterback sneak so you can go for another one on fourth down. That's where, that's where you see a lot of guys will go for the quarterback sneak on third down. Even if they don't get it, they still have a chance for another quarterback sneak on fourth down. So 2.16 to go here in the first final game of the quarterfinals. Simmies will be coming your way next. And Dion will take it out to the 29-yard line, and that's where Scheman will get possession number the two. He came up on a four and out his last time with the Rock. Yeah, and he says he's a conservative player. Uh, even though he's one of the better players uh, that are, exist in our community, he's a very conservative player until he has to put his foot on the gas. So offset eye formation here, and there goes Marshawn Lynch. He's at the 20, the 10, touchdown. It's Skittles time. And he's scheming over there in the, in the corner of the picture right there. It, listen, that's a great way. He wants to run the ball if he can. He, he will go to the pass, but he's a run first style player as well. So you have two players in this game kind of going against the grain in terms of how they want to win a game. They want to win the game by controlling line of scrimmage, by dominating with the run. 71-yard touchdown for Untouched. Marshawn Lynch. And just ran by Bud Dupree. Untouched. Untouched. You don't see that very often. No, not at all. And so now it's time for Niner. You get all the way down to the one. You couldn't punch it in. And then you give up the big gash up the gut. That's real tough when you're playing a, 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 a guy of the caliber of scheme in there. You, know, you kind of go into the game. You're like, everyone's saying that this is the guy that's going to win. And, and then you kind of get a big break. You, you have a great drive. Uh, you get a stop on fourth down. And then you get into a tough spot on the one. I think you're going to punch it in, and you only get a field goal. Just like that, you give up a touchdown. Now you're down. Seven to three. Niner trailing by four. And he goes to Frank Gore, and Gore lowers his head to the 36. Yeah, Frank Gore is the focal point of his offense, whether it's the run, whether it's the pass. Favorite player of his as well. He wants to get the ball to him early and often. Niner's the biggest 49ers fan in this bracket. Needs the hometown crowd to get behind him here. He said that the strong pair is his favorite formation. It's, it, he believes it's also the best running formation in the game that no one uses. He thinks that that power O is what gives him the distinct advantage in this game. I'm gonna give you a real talk here. Ever since the patch, you know, two patches ago, power O is, is lit. The oh, kids yeah. say it's lit. I would say it's the new meta. Right? So moving to the 47 yard line, in the plus territory. I have to give the chat the cringe moments they need. Oh, yeah. There have there probably been a couple <laughs> throughout the day. A couple more remaining, too. So methodical drive thus far. 1.07 to go. Here in game number four. Niner trailing by four. And the power up. Cut it inside. Nice vision. And he squint, uh, spins and twists to the 42-yard line. Both guys pretty locked in right now. Oh, a tight ball game here. No mistakes so far. Here's this defense though right here, a 4-3 style. It's very similar to Nickel Blitz. You saw him use it in the Madden Challenge online group stage to go 3-0. Unique style defense. Second and six. Got him wide Has open. a man open and throws an absolute dot to Bolden. Huge play right there. Four for four so far, Brett Favre. Attacking that cover two downfield to that deep sideline. Looked like he was cross manned up uh, with an interior linebacker. And you're not defending him with, with a linebacker, I'll tell you that much. First and goal at the six now. The second time he's been in the red zone. Hands it off the gore. And really lucky, the former Hurricane, Philip Dorsett, recovers. Big time hit right there. You can see Frank Gore off this left edge, and he comes down with the big hit stick. Is that Mark Barron causing the fumble? That's why he's on the roster. Well, Personal player. Well, Gore and Dor Dorsett both played at the U. So they, they got each other's backs on that one. Ball chemistry. to seven. They have chemistry right there. That's where it <laughs> happened. Yes. Brett Favre, the legend in the gun. Rolling. Throws. And it's picked off. Yeah, I forced that one right there. That's not the game that you want to play with Brett Favre. He tried to extend the play, roll out of the pocket. You're going to see here, he scrambled, and he's trying to get a high point pass up, but Mel Blunt gets his paw on it, gets a tip, and then who else but Deion Sanders in the Niners jerseys. Of course, Brett Favre, the all-time 
leading interception thrower in the history of the NFL. Man, he's just having fun out there. He's just <laughs> slinging the ball around the backyard in his jeans, hanging out, just with the dog, hanging around. That's what he's out there doing. Just throwing the ball all over the field. You know, Jerry Glanville, you know, the, the head coach of the Falcons when he was with Atlanta, just called him Mississippi because he, he didn't think, he didn't need to learn his name. He didn't think he was going <laughs> to be in the league for very long. Of course, went on to have an incredible career with the Packers. And we're going to have a timeout here. 421 to go in the second. And Scaman has stood tall in the red zone twice. Yeah, he he's got the turnovers he needed. He got one turnover. He got a stop for a field goal. That's the name of the game. If you can prevent your opponent from getting points in that the red zone area, that's where you win ball games. Couple nice crossing patterns. So McNair will find Jones. And that's his first completion of the game. It's nice being up four points, and that's your first completion of the game. I'd say things are going well for you if you're winning and you've only completed one pass. So good defense. We ran the ball real well in that last scoring drive in the first play. Untouched with Marshawn Lynch. And it's really just been that one big play. Niners pretty much dug in. And they'll go with a handoff here. And Nice job by Bruce Irvin controlling the edge. Yeah, he, he actually evaded the first uh, uh, defender in the backfield, so good stick right there from Scheman, but too many defenders in the area for a two-yard loss. So Julio Jones out to the left, and Ed McCaffrey is in the slot. Shotgun formation on second and 12. McNair looking, finding Jimmy Graham up the seam, and Graham will run in another big play for Scheman. Yeah, and he split the safeties right there. So we talked earlier about a cover two invert, and the strength of it is it allows you to stack the box in the line of scrimmage with defenders. The weakness is that you have your outside corners. You can see here, they're responsible for protecting the deep middle of the field, and they just can't close quick enough. Even guys like Mel Blunt, they can't close quick enough. So when you run a vertical in the deep middle part of the field, that's where you stretch the defense when you play against a cover two invert. So now it's an 11-point game. And Niner, who's actually looked really good, just can't get it it's done inside the 10. It is one of those games where right now, you know, to say if it were to end at this point right now, you would say, well, I, I feel like I played a great game. Yeah. I feel like I did everything I needed to do. I ran the ball well. Frank Gore was playing well. I got into the red zone multiple times. But somehow, when you look up at the scoreboard, you're losing still. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's tough to overcome. but. You're, only, you're still in this game. You're only down 11, two-score two game. You do get the ball at the half. 3.05 to go here in the second quarter. But a great day thus far from Levi Stadium. 49ers have been an incredible host thus far. Good route. And there's Jones. Not in at the 38. I believe James Jones on that play. A nice roster addition to his squad. You don't see a lot of James Jones, but that was a beautiful play. He motions over a vertical wheel pattern, which is delayed, gets to a very really tender part of the field. Huge conversion right there, getting him into scoring range. Yeah, that's it. That's elite award winner James Jones from the Packers. Coming up that big grab. Now second and five. Yeah, and again, look at he's moving the ball, he's getting in the spots. He's just not making the, the big plays to help him win the game. Yeah, questionable play calling it within the 10, and there's Jones again. They'll pin on where he had the ball when he went out of bounds, and they'll call it third and inches. A nice little touch on that pass right there for GG Niner. Hails from San Jose, California. If you heard of it, Scott, right here, homegrown, uh, looking to compete here, take down the number two seed in the tournament scheming. We were downtown San Jose. We were. Well, Santana Row getting our grub on. Santana Row, fantastic. It's the best mall ever. So third and inches, big play. And it's Brent Selleck who can't hold on. You gotta go. Yeah. You gotta go. No, take the field goal. Here's why. You take a field goal, it's still a one touchdown game as you see the ball popped out of the hands there uh, with Mel Blunt. You gotta take the field goal because it makes it a one score game. But this is what I'm talking about, the you play calling. No, you have to. Third and inches, move the chains. No, you can't. You, you got to make it a one-score game. When you have an opportunity to make a one-score game, that's what you do. He gets ball at half as well. I'm buying that. I'm not buying the third down call. Fourth and inches. Boy, I feel like I'm taking on Farrell. <laughs> I feel like I'm Farrell. Let's that's, get Farrell yeah, in fine. here. Scott Jenda. 
And he did goes he short it? to Gore. Did He's he got to reach out. Did he get it? That will move the chains. Frank Gore manning up. Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. Now, he definitely should have gone for it. So he'll go back to Gore. Big hit. That was a big hit by Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, he's run the ball well. 10 rushes, 58 yards. So he's going for 5.8 yards a rush. I was That's told there'd be math. no math. There's math. Always math with me, Scott. Always math. Strong left. Strong Trailing by 11. Let's go. 85 seconds to go in the half. Bunch to the right. He's going to move Gore over. And that's the way. Good heat. Nice find. Little check down, and Gore will pick up four, maybe five. It'll be third and three. Yeah, great change of pace right there. Goes from a corner blitz, unexpected right there, off that right edge, but good awareness uh, from Niner. He dumps the ball off in the flat, gets to a manageable third down. So now, world is your oyster here. Do you go for a pop pass over the middle of the field? You're not seeing a ton of cover two from Steeman, so that's where you're not seeing all those quick passes in the seams, and it were kind of resulting in more dink and dunks over the middle of the field. So third and three from the gun is far. Got him, coach. And he finds, oh my, touchdown. <laughs> I just have to laugh. It was a strip, but he was crossed the plane. Touchdown, Anquan Bolden. And he doesn't go for two. It, it, here's the thing, you, you, you don't go for two, you wait for it later. Here's the play one more time. Open receiver, he gets in the end zone, then punched out. That's where the touchdown stands. Uh, on that play call, going against that cover zero defense. So good play call, uh, good play to go against that man-to-man -man coverage. So 14 to 10, Niner finally getting it done in the red zone. I think that's what he thought. He's like, I just need a, I need a passing route that gets me into the end zone. When I get down there close, yeah. that scheming defense is tough. Well, think about the difference in this one. I mean, you can debate over the, the first possession where he took the field goal. And, but it's really that that 71-yard rushing touchdown, Marshawn Lynch untouched. Uh, those, those are uncharacteristic-style uh, plays that you, you're going to get in a game. So you got to keep your head up high here if you're 90. You're playing really well. It's been two big plays. Got him, coach. The long play by Jimmy Graham and a good job by Kraus coming over the top. You know, we had the long pass to Jimmy Graham, the rush by Marshawn Lynch for the other touchdown. Besides that, Niners look pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's played really well. He's at good defense. He's forced uh, uh, Schemen to, to get into a third and long spots. Uh, he's been playing really well in this game. That's a great thing about Madden football. These heroes come from anywhere. anywhere. Could it be Niner from right up the road great to San user. Jose? Fantastic. And there is Green, and Green will drop it. So clock will stop third and 10 with 25 ticks to go in the half. If I had a camera, if I had like a, a, a marker that I could diagnose that play, that was a fantastic user by Niner on that play. He went to the deep post. I think that's the route that uh, Steeman wanted to go to, but just a high level, amazing user play on that last possession there from Niner. My error, it was 39 seconds to go in the half. Ball's at the 25. Third and 10. The look has a man. And there is Ladarius Green. I already told you to go to the auction house and get him because he's a big time player. Should probably pick one up very fast. He's great on underneath droughts like drags. He's not going to be uh, a big time run blocker, but in terms of the receiving player on your squad, Ladarius Green is the guy you want on your roster for great value as well. First and 10. Half a minute left here in the second quarter. Up by four is Bam. Got greedy. Got a little greedy there. He, he had Lynch in that left flat. He was open, but he was looking for the deep cross. Kind of wanted to float it up over the top of the user defender. But instead, he uh, gets a conversion to, to Lynch. Yeah. So they'll move the chains. Ball at the 40 now. 24 seconds to go. Scheman, a.k.a. Bam, does have one timeout left to his name. A lot of audibles coming from McNair. And McNair will roll right. And he'll just keep it and try to get out of bounds at the 35-yard line. That'll stop the clock with 17 seconds to go. And here we are at the San Francisco 49ers Club Series Championship in Santa Clara, California. You have Scheman right there. You have GGG. That's a lot of Gs. Niner on the right here. 
from San Jose, the hometown favorite, Niners fan. Couldn't ask for any more. Second and four. McNair roll will out. find Lynch, who stays in bounds. You got to pull the time out here. Yeah, so now 10 seconds. You got ball to 27. You still have time, as you see here, the roll out of possession the Possession catch, right? Yeah, there was a possession catch. You have to go there just to try and keep your toes in bounds, but you still have time right here. 10 seconds. You're going to make sure you pass. Wow, he takes the field goal right away. Okay. I like that. I mean, so listen. So not taking any chances, not taking any chances. On, a, on a sack. And why? And why should you at that point? That's, that's a heads you play call. Go up one full score, right? You got to like your odds there. So you often wonder, and it's tough to process that quickly. You probably want to use your timeout with three seconds on the clock and, and not with 10, but I think he needed that time to think about what he wanted to Decompress do. Decompress a little bit, right? So it's a touchdown lead, and Niner will just hand it off to Gore and see if Gore can get a little miracle play before the half, and he will not. But the important thing to, to note here is Niner's about to get the ball. He's only trailing by a touchdown. Yeah, and I think that had a lot to do with why Scheman took that field goal at the end of the half, uh, knowing that he, Niner gets the ball. Yeah, let's go into this half. Let's make sure that, you know, even if Niner does come down and score a touchdown, that it's a tie ball game. So I think a lot of that had to do with the decision he made there by taking that field goal. First and 10 at the 17 for Niner, and he's back in that pro formation. Tries to go with a misdirection, and it goes nowhere. He loves this set. Run the ball really well from it, but he has shown that he has the ability to air it out. He runs uh, the, state, uh, the Los Angeles Rams uh, offensive playbook. Uh, likes a lot of the running sets, thinks that most people, they, they look at this playbook as something that you want to pass with, but he is a run first player from this playbook. Bunch to the right, second and 11. Ball to 16 to start the half. Favre has got Gore off to his left. And Favre looking downfield and he does not see Anthony Bar. That was one of those plays, and I think everyone in the in the chat in the building here would nod their head in agreement when you're you're playing Madden and you you throw the ball and before you even throw it, you know you threw an interception. That's what that was right there. I mean, Scheman made a phenomenal play. And then Marshawn Lynch will be near the first down marker, and they will give him first and goal. Uh, he's got a, you got to lock up here if if you're Niner. You got to hold him to only a field goal in this spot here. Play some big boy defense on the red zone goal line. Now I know we had a lurk. Was that a little bit of a Stevie on the throw? Uh, that, might have, that might have been a Todd. Opposite of a dot, yep. it's literally a Todd. So it's a Todd. First and goal from the three. Lynch gets hit by Ed to Todd Jones. Loses a yard, second and goal from the four. Yeah, there you go. That's the that's step one to, to hold him to a field goal here. Clamp down, uh, put some more linebackers on the field as he did there. Uh, and not allow any rushing yards on this on this play here. Well, the doctor needs a little bit of a pick six here. And he'll run the QB draw, and Air McNair works it in. Love it. I absolutely love the play call. Unbelievable play call there. The, the play. And Niner can't even believe it. I don't even know if Skiba can believe it. He just, McNair just truck guys right in the end zone. That's why, that's why guys like Zan, right here you can see, gets the snap and he's just going full head of steam into the end zone. That's why guys like Zan, as you said, say he's the best quarterback in the game. And ran over Vince Wilford. How many times have you seen that happen? <laughs> Not too often. And so now Niners got some work to do. A hometown hero trailing by 14. Good user. Favre goes to work, has X wide open. Finally finds Dorsett. Oh, yeah. He's gonna go a little more up tempo here. That's a good decision here right now. Scheman is, is gonna look good on his last few possessions. Second and one has to get rid of it. Forced it into Jones. Yeah, gotta be careful right there. Def yeah, force that throw. I mean, we've seen that as a, a spot on the field where uh, a lot of guys have, have had bad things happen for them in this tournament thus far. A lot of the interceptions happen in that area of the field. That's where a lot of action occurs in competitive Madden, right over the short middle of the field. Third and one. 
will go to Frank Gore. And that'll move the sticks. Yeah, good conversion right there. You're still in this ball game. Just put together a drive. You're only down two scores. A lot of clock left in this game. Favre. Nice bleak out of the backfield. Checks down to Gore. Gore's got some space. And Anthony Barr holds on at the 46-yard line to take down Gore. Yeah, great use of Gore on the back. You can see he's going to put him on a short little flat. There's no one over there, only Bud Dupree. He doesn't have the agility to hang with Gore in the open field. Gore runs right by him for a considerable gain there, the first down. 2.27 to go here in the third, trailing by 14 is Niner. And he'll work it with Favre. Got to get rid of it. That's the pressure we were talking about. Now he does drop down to that nickel blitz defense to start generating some pressure. He's kind of hanging in that 4-3 defense for the majority of the game, but let's see if he has some success from nickel, uh, nickel blitz. And I like to throw out the value players. Lonnie Ballantyne, the bronze coming off the edge. Lonnie Ballantyne, Madden stud. Second and 17. Jones with a nice stiff arm, but he only pick up two. Yeah, and right now, Niner needs to be very careful with all these underneath uh, passes. Scheman is really getting a beat on the throws. He was just about one step away from getting another interception right there. Third and 14. Big down for Niner. Looking. Has a man, Selleck, who can't hold on. Let me tell you the reason. It's Sean Taylor. Yeah, Selleck is the, you know, he's a, a solid uh, tight end, but to hang in this ball in traffic when Sean Taylor gives you a forearm shiver like that, you're not hanging on to the rock. So fourth and 14, you gotta go. Biggest play of the game thus far for Niner. Yeah, let's see if we can catch a deep crossing pattern here, delayed style read here, but you're gonna have to get your pass protection order off that right edge. As he picks up a good blitz up the middle of the field, and Gore will not get enough for the first down, and Scheman Fantastic. will take over on down. Fantastic defense right there. He had pressure off the right edge, but he ran a delayed blitz up the middle of the field, directly in the A-gap, forced that throw. If he, if, if Niner had a little bit more time in the pocket, he would have been able to get a first down. Gore just couldn't get the depth on the route to get the first down. So a minute 33 to go in the third. ERG Scheman in control. There's a big hit stick on Marshawn Lynch. Once again, Sean Taylor. Sean Taylor all over the field. He's a, he's a menace. He's a menace all over the field. Speed, size, height. McNair, quick throw to Jimmy Graham, trying to shake it loose there. You really look at it though, six for 11 for a buck 28, only one touchdown. He, he really hasn't won this game because of his passing offense. I mean, he's really won it because of his defense. And, and again, that big run that he had. And, and, it's also really important to point out, just taking that field goal at the end of the half and, and going up and making sure you're up by one touchdown, just great game management so far from Scheman. Niners gonna move the safeties down the box here on third and eight. They decide to bail out. McNair can't get rid of it. And it's gonna bring up a big fourth and eight from the 49, and if I know my man Scheman, he's going for it. Yeah, Ed Tutel Jones, little block shed inside. You can see we said earlier, block shed is when a defender will break free from an offensive lineman. Said at the top of this, this actual matchup, Ed Tutel Jones was the guy to watch out for, making plays all over the field for Niner and his defense. We're setting up for quite the semifinals. Oh. You can't get excited for that. You yeah. can't get excited for anything. Winner of this one will face SC. Lynch has all kind of room, nice spin move, down to the 34-yard line. Yeah, and the clear out SE option, talking to uh, the Scheman earlier in the day, he said that's his favorite play in uh, fourth down red zone situations, and he said the route that usually they leave unguarded, the halfback route, and it happened right there. First and 10, clock now down to 13 seconds remaining in the quarter. Four second differential between the play clock and the game clock. And they'll hand it off to Lynch and that'll take us to the fourth quarter. Scheman leading by 14. Scheman playing, I would say maybe not his best game that we've ever seen him play. Not the most dominating style play of game, but when you're, when you're playing just uh, an okay game for yourself and you're winning by 14 with ball late, uh, early in the fourth, things are going well for you today. Lynch, nine carries, 81 yards, and a touchdown. And 
You know, had a 71-yard touchdown rush. Tone setter, tone setter. It changed the entire momentum of the game. When you get a, a freebie touchdown like that, it really helps you in like your, your psyche, your ability to get into the flow of the game. That, that's what happens in, in, a, in a big game is when you get a, a touchdown like that, it really changes the momentum factor of a game. Here comes another fourth down. This will be a 50-yarder. It's up, and it is good. It's a big field goal. And now it's a three-score game. It's a big field goal. Going up three scores with 4.35 to go. And when you look at Niner, he's had a difficult time scoring in the red zone in this one. Uh, so that's that's really a big-time score right now uh, as we uh, approach the, the closing minutes of this fourth quarter. So Philip Dorsett will take it to the 26-yard line. And now Niner's going to need some help. He's going to need everything to go his way here in this fourth quarter. He's going to score quickly. I come back to he hasn't played a bad game. It's been two plays. Yeah, it, yeah, it has. Two plays have been the difference. And he's not played well in the red zone when he's had the ball. On a missed opportunity. It's again. That is tough. That is tough. That's a tougher blitz, one of the toughest blitzes I've seen. And he's sending a lot of resources. He's sending six defenders. We can take a look at your pressure gets picked off the right edge, but it's delayed in through that A gap. Uh, and that's a blitz we really haven't seen this year. And he still has that same cover two coverage behind it that is so popular from these nickel blitz styles. And that's a, the uniqueness we were saying about Scheman, which gives him the advantage. Yeah, Bud Dupree and Jadavion Clowney in there on the sack. Throws it to Dorsett, and Dorsett, have you met Barron? You have now. He did earlier in the game when, it, when Barron laid the big hit for the fumble. And so third and 11. Must score drive for Niner. Got to get rid of it. And he throws it away. It'll be fourth and 11. Yeah, fourth in the game right here. Fourth in your tournament life. Fourth and 11. What play do you go to here? Right now, scheman has been changing up his coverages. He's going from formation to formation, popping in the nickel blitz too. Hanging out in the 4-3 stack a little bit. A little bit of 4-3 over. He's really changed up his play calls, causing some confusion here for Niner. Press coverage on the outside here on fourth and 11. Little motion to the left. Can Brett Favre move the chains? Like that, all coverage right here from Scheman. Good user. Looking downfield. Got to get rid of it. And Dorsett cannot put a glove on it. Yeah, that's tough. Dorsett was streaking free over the middle of the field, but that becomes a height factor. That becomes a throw accuracy factor in, in those situations. So a uh, tough break right there for Niner, but good defense from Scheman. We saw earlier in that drive a lot of high, up-tempo, aggressive blitzing defenses. But then on that fourth down, he goes to all-out coverage. Ultimately, you see Niner turns it over. You know, we're in March Madness. I, I was expecting a Cinderella moment in this first round. Has not happened. Well, yeah, it hasn't happened. We, we could, hey, listen, we, we could still have Cinderella moments maybe with, with Nini and SC. I would say Nini is the is the guy. He's, he's the next man up. Nini's the guy. Let's he's go. going to have to get by Monsta in the semifinals. And right now, there's still three minutes to go, but it looks like we're going to have SC and Scheman. In semifinal number two. Over under on the Nini smiles in that game. One or one or none. <laughs> I'm going with none. <laughs> he could win and there'd still be none. And it's picked off by Niner. Bud Dupree really needs to take this to the house, but Marshawn Lynch pushes him out of bounds at the 15. Yeah, so a little bit of life here. That's a nice user play over the middle of the field. You can see he dropped back to it. I really like that. So a user play, what does that mean? When you have a, a, a player that you're literally controlling on the field, you are virtually controlling them on the field, dictating where they go. Uh, that's what we call usering. And you can see Niner, he usered a short pattern, and then he dropped back to the deep pattern, and that's where he got the pick. You know, Anthony Barr's got range, and so does Bud Dupree. Big time interception, got to get rid of it. And that's really, to me, been the factor in this game is just cannot pick up the blitz from yeah. Scheman. Yeah, and, and he's got a really good blitz off that right edge. He, he has uh, multiple versions of what you're seeing from this blitz. It, more passive style where he rushes three or four, and then the more aggressive style where he'll send six. Second and 10. Good play. Ooh, almost got that. And Brent Selleck 
with another drop, his third of the game. Yeah, third and 10 right there. Another good user there from Scheman. Another thing to point out when you're seeing these guys uh, usering players on the field, they'll have a little blue circle underneath their defender. You'll see here at the snap of the ball, watch the defender in the middle of the field. See how that guy moving right there? He's the user defender. He's the guy that you want to not throw towards because that's the most dangerous player on the field. So at the snap of the ball here, you're going to see a little blue circle underneath him. There it is, that's the user player. Has time, gotta get rid of it though. And James Jones cannot haul it in. And Niner has really gone away from what worked in the first half. Running the ball. Running with Gore and hitting Gore out of the backfield on those quick routes. Yeah, and what was, what's tough is, you know, when he was in the first part of the game, he was he had the, the early lead, he was running the ball well, and then that that 71 yard touchdown run just got him out of out of his kind of scheme that we were seeing him run, uh, and then he hasn't really looked. Uh, his scheme hasn't really looked back from it. So Niners facing a fourth and ten, 2:27 to go. Block and seven here. Watch a delayed read right over the middle of the field. You're going to see James Jones. He had an early play in the game that was big a big route for him here. He's manned up this time, and he has Selleck who holds on. That'll move the change. Got to go hurry up. Far 15 of 25 in this one. Yeah, and I might not see like a, a, a huge play in, in the outcome of this game, but what makes a great Madden player uh, one of the best in the world is the adjustment we just saw on that previous play. The motion that James Jones, that unique route, it was the result of a huge play in the early part of the game uh, for Niner. Uh, but that time, Scheman, he actually made an adjustment. He defended against it because he recognized the motion and he took it away. He ultimately still got the first down, but just wanted to point that out. Two minute warning, second and five. Quick throw to Jones. And it'll be close to the marker. They'll mark him just shy, third and inches. Third and inches. You're down three scores here. And you score in a hurry. And those are the rounds he's needed. He's trying to look for some development downfield, but with those blitzes, you just don't have time for that. And there's the Clowney. No, you don't. Clowney off that edge gets a block shed right there. Said at the top of this uh, match here that Jadavia Clowney wanted to watch how he would change the course of this game. And you can see when you have these big time players, you get into a big third in inches. Clowney wins his one-on-one -on -one matchup, and that's what leads to the incomplete pass right there for Niner. Watch Clowney again off that left edge, pass rushing. He's had some big fourth and inches situations. Has not capitalized on his it's opportunities. And does a nice job coming back to find Jones. That was his initial read. Had to come back to him across the field. And that'll move the chains. Yeah, right here, you start to have to play the clock game here. At some point, you know, you need three scores. So at what point do you just start, you just kick the field goal and go for an onside kick? It, it really, because you need three scores. So it doesn't matter how you get them, when you get them. Get him now, get him later, and right here, you're gonna see it. See, that, that, that's just a very smart play call. Why not just, you know, try and, he's gonna conserve his timeouts. If he's able to get the onside kick, that's one possession back, and then he could kick it off if he were to get a touchdown, and then he just has to play big boy D, get a stop. So he'll go. cut it to two scores. Is he onside, or does he try to get the stop defensively with his timeouts? I, th I think uh, there's, he's gonna kick it deep. Okay. You could, you could still play the same game if you kick it short, right? I mean, you, you might get in the field goal range, but... So conventional wisdom yep. is what Niner will play. And Dion will bring it out, and that'll move the clock. Uh -oh. And he has some room. Dion, prime time, and this game is over. See ya, Dion Sanders to the crib. And the Niners fans in the house erupted on that return from Dion Sanders. I see you over there, that's right, they're excited. Thumbs up in the crowd. Deion Sanders puts this game away, puts it on ice. And, the, and, and that is exactly what we were talking about with Niner. Like, he, he's playing the game he wanted to play, he envisioned. Like, if you were to say, okay, he made a great decision by uh, going for the field goal there to give himself a best chance to get back in the game, but every time Skeevan just comes back and answers with something, and, and no, you can't, can't hang your head here if you're Niner. Just absolutely getting manhandled here in this second half. And it's been the big plays. And mark that down as another one. Big plays. A big long rush by Lynch. A long gain from Jimmy Graham. And now a kickoff return for Dion. 
And with 60 seconds to go, it'll a little hurry up offense. But now you're just playing for pride. Now you're playing for pride, you're playing for San Jose, you're playing for the Niners. No doubt this will be a moment he'll, he'll never forget. And he might be thinking about the score. It's all right. But to get to come and play in, in, in Levi Stadium, the home of your team. There's nothing better. There, I mean, there's nothing better, man. When you when you get when you play this game so much, uh, it, and really it's it's uh, a, like a lifestyle choice that you make, and, and you love the game so much, and you spend so much time playing, to get the recognition, the validation, to show your friends, your family, people that are close to you, that how big this is becoming, what competitive Madden is turning into, what esports is turning into. That's what this represents. Uh, it's an opportunity of what the future holds for a lot of these guys and people at home that want to try and get on this stage. Uh, it, it's just a beautiful thing, so you got to keep your head up. And if, if you're out there, you want to start competing, you could be here too next time. Yeah, we, you know, we already had some folks come up to me and say, "How do I? How, how did I miss getting involved in this? Where you got to get online, got to play games, got to play some games, get on the leaderboard." These guys all here. Most of these guys here played about 200 games uh, during the qualifying period to get and qualify for this tournament. Uh, I mean, that's a commitment. That, I mean, that's a lot of time to play, and for good reason. There's a lot of cash that's being given out at these tournaments. Well, it looks like that'll be the end of the road for Niner. Our guy from nearby San Jose. And it was close. The majority of the first half was, a, was really tight. And then a couple big plays. And next thing you know, Scheman is, is rolling. Yeah, he played a great game. He played the game he wanted to play. I think he would have looked back and probably saw a couple areas where, yeah, if this went this way or that. I, th I think the touchdown, when he got into the red zone, he had to kick the field goal. I think that was the tone setter, and then that was followed by the 71-yard touchdown run to Marshawn Lynch. And that's tough to overcome. It changes your, your psyche. It changes the way you are anticipating playing the game because uh, you feel good off that opening possession, and then right, at, right, right away you give up that, that run, and it just kind of crushes your soul. Yeah, and then he d really didn't go back to the game, didn't go back to the running game, didn't go back to the short passing game. But scheming, you got to tip the cap to him, and Joe Fan is standing by with a winner. Just turn the mic on. Got to turn the mic on for you. All right. Okay. It was at close at halftime. You pull away in the second half. How are you able to do so? I uh, just stuck to my plan. I played, you know, the same defense I've been playing versus a lot of these alignments and in, in, in formations, and I just stuck with my plan. All right. I'm just going to give you an example. Of this. So they're seeing the replays of prime time taking it to the house. I'm watching you. Is that the ski? That's the scheming face. Part of the swag, man. What are you jamming to? Uh, a lot of... A lot of the new stuff that's coming out with the rap songs, Future, a lot of that stuff. I like this. My, one of my biggest things here is I like to see who's playing quarterback for each team. So why Steve McNair? Uh, he fits my scheme. Uh, my Carolina book, sometimes I like to use my quarterback when I'm in, a, in the red zone. And uh, he's mobile. He can throw the ball. Uh, why not? You got touchdown, kickoff return touchdown. Two touchdowns of over uh, 60 yards. Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch, untouched 71 yards. How are you able to create big plays? Uh, just try to find the weak spots, uh, make my reads before, the, before I snap the ball, and then I just attack. His scheme worked. He's scheming. He's going to the semifinals. That's coming up in just a minute. Scott and Gibbs, back to you. Joe Fan, I see what you did there. I, I like see, it. I, I like it.